Hello everyone, Andrew Fixology. Hope you all had a good Memorial Day. I might be a little late on the late on the ball there, but better late than never, I guess. So uh, mine went pretty well, just nice and chill, which I'm totally fine with. Remembering all the ones that gave away our, that gave the you know ultimate sacrifice, so we can live in the country that we that we we do now and how we live in it. So, um, gonna just get uh, first thing. Uh, I do want to thank PCB Way for sponsoring today's video. Um, they we, I will have more information about them in a little bit. Otherwise, they do have a description down in the links. So feel free to check them out. Uh, right now, uh, today what we have is we have an iPad 9. 10.2 inch screen uh, that is model A2602 and this has a broken uh, broken screen or a broken digitizer because if you remember on iPads they have two parts they have the digitizer or at least for most sorry for most iPods uh, iPads they have two sections that are replaceable you have the digitizer which is the glass and to touch your uh, to touches your um, and detects your fingers and whatnot and then you have the picture underneath the LCD screen which is replaceable but more expensive that just provides the picture though in this case, it is just the digitizer, um, so it's a, it's a fairly average break, honestly. It's not all the way around the outside or anything like that, so nothing super crazy, but it's definitely going to be one of the more um, messier ones, which now makes me regretfully, which now makes me realize that I have no safety glasses, so if you're doing this at home and it's really, really bad, make sure to do some sort of safety glasses or even like put tape on top of it um i'm just too lazy to find uh, to do the tape thing and honestly i just don't have any of the safety glasses so this is the ipad as you can see pretty pretty cracked i mean not horrible you can see all the scratches and everything around it but it's not like all broken in like one huge conglomerate crazy thing so so what i'm gonna do is we are going to start in the bottom left corner of the device, or if you're looking at orientated, it's going to be this corner right here. So that would be the bottom. Actually, that's still the bottom right. Actually, it would be bottom left if it was orientated the other way. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by just getting a good starting point underneath. Um, I just use an accessible tool to get it. You can use your, um, you know, your little suctions if you want. Um, these little guys, something like that. If you feel if you like using those, I personally don't really like them that much, so I don't bother. Um, kind of just do it like the old-fashioned way. And then we'll see how easy this wants to come off, which it looks like it's not going to. So right off the bat, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some isopropylene to it. Just to weaken it all up, and then hopefully it won't need anything too much more. Um, also, this video, I'm going to try... Um, I'm going to try... Well, at least for this one, since iPads take a while, I'm going to try and edit, editing it down a little bit. So I'm going to try my hand at trying to um, shorten the videos. Not like too bad, but like all like the boring parts. Like right now, all I'm gonna do is be taking apart the screen itself, which isn't super exciting. Uh, this is normally where I come with the pick. With the pick. So it's not like the most crazy thing in the world, because all I'm doing is just taking, is just dislodging tape from underneath. I mean, if this goes fast enough, then I'm not going to bother with it because sometimes they do come up really easily and really nicely. But if this is going to take a while, I'm thinking I'm just going to speed it up a little bit or maybe just cut to a part where maybe it's a little more interesting or I have something fun to say. Um, and then you guys can let me know if you prefer that more style or if you more prefer me just going through the whole thing without any, you know, just the whole repair without any sort of breaks outside of like, you know, maybe like cutting it for like heating it because I don't want you guys just to wait for five minutes in silence while I wait for the damn uh, thing to heat up. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But this one's coming apart pretty easily. I want to.
is not going to come off the right way. It could be that the adhesive might be stronger than the glass, but I know the glass isn't always this exact same as the Apple, as the iPhone, or sorry, the iPad glass that comes with it, so straight from Apple. But, I mean, nobody can get a hold of Apple parts, so what do, what do they expect us to do, right? We do the best we can. You know, every everyone's got a different quality, so... All right, so it should be hot enough. Oh, that sounds that feels like a splinter. So now these open from the left, like a well, like you know, like a I, I guess like a book, but they're all reversed. So what you can do is once you get this weak enough or hot enough, be very gentle, especially around that home button, because there is the home button, but the flex runs along the top, like right along here. So you got to be real careful when you're opening it. Left side, there's basically nothing though. You don't have to worry about that. Right side, really important stuff. But all you need to do, get all this adhesive loose. Man. And if it is hot enough and weak enough, whoop, see? That's what I was worried about. Popped right off. That's what I was worried about. It doesn't want to come up like it's supposed to. So I gotta get in there and do it the old-fashioned way. Actually, just kidding. It is coming up. It's just caught on some some adhesive. So I'm just gonna take an exacto knife and cut right through it. There we go. Okay. Nice and easy. Man, I do not have good coverage for iPads. Ah! But you see, see that strip goes all the way across the top there. Um, apparently there's a component right in here in this little shield. That's where it controls all the Touch ID stuff. But as long as nothing gets ripped or damaged, you should be A-OK. -okay. And it looks like everything looks fine. So we are all set there. Perfect. All right. So we don't need to worry about this piece for a bit. So I'm just going to put it over here. And I'm going to put just something underneath it to hold in place. It can go flat. I just don't have the room. So... And, oh, that's a good amount of glare, too, from that light. Eh, whatever. I'm working with what I got. Okay. So now, uh, with these guys... Oh, I guess I haven't done this one. Because it's still got the sticker right up there. Huh. Maybe that's one of their other ones. Sorry, I'm rambling. Losing my mind. So, what we need to do now is there is some... There is a, like a... I don't know. Sticker or piece of adhesive over the top of four screws that need to come out in order to remove the LCD, this black screen right here. Now there are a couple models, which I think the Air 2s and newer, and a good portion of the, of the Pros, where they're what's called a display, a fused display assembly, meaning that they're all the pieces in one. So they're this and this in one piece, which makes the labor a lot easier, because all you have to do is just move one piece. But the downside of that is those parts are extremely expensive. So sometimes, if it's a newer one, it might not even be worth it to get it fixed. The keyword is sometimes, you know, if you don't want to deal with the whole transferring of data or make sure everything's backed up or I'm not sure if you have it backed up, then obviously repl replacement or repair is going to be a much better fit for you. But, you know, there's, there's all sorts of people in the world. Some want it one way and some want it another way. I am here to help out the best I can. Sometimes my way is the way they want, sometimes it isn't, so, yeah. It's just the way of the world, ugh. So there's a little bit of glass in front of this last piece that I gotta remove, ah! Because, you know, let's, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a repair if it was easy, right? Ugh. Ask any mechanic. Okay, there we go. Oops, and I just gleeped all over the screen. Well, I'm going to clean it off later anyway, so it's no big deal. Okay, so take that off. This doesn't need to go back on either when you're done. I think it's just literally for covering, but you can put it back on if you want. I generally don't. Ooh, that's a splinter. Ah! All right, got it. All right. So now you need a double. You need a double O Phillips head, which I don't know where mine's hiding. Oh, there it is right in front of me. 
And then all we're going to do is take these all out. Um, these Phillips heads are a little, uh, sorry, these screw placements are a little unique. Normally in these, they have one that is different size. So I would recommend to make sure to keep them in the order that you took them out and also the correct orientation. So if you need to make like a note or something like that on where you're putting your, um, screws, you know, I put on their iPad, iPad nine, just so I know, uh, what, what I'm working on. Cause I got still crap from the, the game boys and the playstations on top of my on top of my magnet mat, so I'm just a disorganized mess right now. Okay. Now, here is a little tricky of a part. For whatever reason, uh, I think after like the iPad 5s and the iPad Airs, maybe the Mini 2s? I don't know. They started using a rubber cement in the corners. I have found the easiest way to get them going is you start with a spudger in the corner here, lift it up ever so slowly, just very little pressure. If it's hot, it'll go a lot smoother. If it's giving you resistance, then heat it up. Mine is going ever so slowly because this LCD can crack too. It is more flexible than the digitizer, but this can damage the. This can be damaged. So it's like if you drop your phone and you notice I got like like these weird discolored lines or like almost like blotches on them. Uh, it's normally like LCD bleed or LCD damage. So you got to be real careful because otherwise you're replacing that for the customer for free. Or if you're doing this on yourself, then you have to buy one. But enough time, just a little bit, little, little, little. There you go. So I got the corner comes up. Perfect. Once you get a corner, it'll start coming up a lot easier because then it'll, dis it'll distribute the pressure better. There you go. Second one came up just prime. And now that I got these two, all I need to do is pick up and rotate upwards, boom, there we go. At least on the newer devices, they did give you a lot more flex to work with. These flexes where the LCD connections used to be, are normally a lot a lot smaller, so you can't even get away with going up and down like this. You'd have to like hold it at a weird angle. So, uh, next thing we're gonna do is something that you normally do when you first work on a device, but unfortunately you can't in this situation just because of how they're set up. We are going to disconnect the battery. The battery, this big old guy right here. This entire thing is the battery. It connects right here. There is a screw that holds it in place, but it's not the only thing that holds it. It actually just relies it relies on pressure as well. Now, with these devices, oh shoot, I don't have anything. I don't have a thinner one. Um, hold on, give me one second. Uh, you know what? I'm, no, I'm not going to make a little I have. Normally, I would use a thinner um, guitar pick to do this. But I'll just show with what I have. So if you have a thin guitar pick, this works a lot better. You need to be careful around here when you're removing it. Um, you don't want to go straight in. Simply because you can damage the pins. Or there are some components on the back side that can damage the backlighting. Which then means you don't get any color. So uh, what I would do is go. So what we, what we normally do is you go from up here right above it. Get in underneath it. Because all that's going to do is just go underneath the board. And, onto the, and hit the framing. And then once you're in there, all you got to do is rotate it up just a little bit. That's it. That's disconnected. About halfway, and that's disconnected. It's not going far behind. It's not going too far to the sides. It's not pushing against anything. I rotated it in nice and gently. So now that battery is disconnected. It's not providing power anywhere. So now we are going to disconnect the LCD, which is underneath this little shield here. What was my, is my screwdriver starting to fail on me? Oh, yeah, it's stripped out, it's stripped out like hell. Why did I do that? Oh, you know what it is? Because I'm using too too big of a screwdriver. I'm really using a triple for this one. There we go, much better. All right, triple for the little guys, not the doubles. Doubles for the big ones, triple for the little guy. All right. These ones are all the same screws, so they can go in whatever order if you want. But again, it's it's good uh, craftsmanship, good um, organization skills to keep everything where you got it from. Shield off. And then the LCD is this guy right here. So we're just going to pop them off real easy. Boop. And there you go. So the screen is disconnected. Now, this is super important. And also, this is very sensitive. So you got to be real careful. There's already going to be a little bit of damp, uh, like uh, surface scratch scratches from the broken glass. That's bound to happen. It is what it is. So you're, you're always your best bet is to clean it off the best to your ability. And I'm out of, uh, 
uh, compressed air, but I got more over there. But um, you will always try to clean off the best you can. Obviously, you blow off all the li liquid, the um, debris first, and then you use some sort of cleaner. Um, I use a little bit of uh, isopropylene on a microfiber cloth or even just like breathing on it. You know, like you build the mist. That actually cleans pretty well. But now at this point, what I like to do, which some people do have a different technique, but what I like to do is I will take a microfiber and put it face down. There you go. And then I wrap it up. So now face down, the microfiber is not going to scratch it in any way. And then also it adds an extra layer. So when I put it on top of something, or if I put it to the side, even if it falls, it'll more likely be able to be saved just because it's wrapped up in the fiber. So I'm going to put that off to the side right now. Okay. So now we're going to disconnect the rest of the screen. Um, got to disconnect the digitizer connections as well as the connections for the home button, which are all right down here. Um, see, let me just move this up a little bit. Can't go too far. There you go. That'll make it a little better. So when I zoom in, when future me zooms in, hopefully it won't look too shitty. Okay. This is just a cover. Put that off to the side. Little sticker on top. This one I would try to keep um, just because it helps a little bit of security. You know, keeping that flex removed around. So I like to just stick mine, like, you know, right at the edge here or something like that. This has a little flip. You flip it up. And then slides right out. Just got a little piece on the back side. There you go. That's disconnected. And then all we got to do is connect the digitizer. One and two. Okay. And now we just have to pull it off like a band-aid. Oh, God. All right, that's really stuck on there. Yeah, I don't think I repaired this one, but whatever adhesive this is being this they used this time, holy crap, is it, is it strong. There we go. Anything left over, no big deal, because we're going to clean it up anyways. Ah, all right. So we still need this component, but I'd recommend heating up. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that onto the hot pad, get it nice and hot, and then while we're waiting for that to heat up, we're going to clean up the rest of this, uh, the rest of this iPad, because brain doesn't work too well. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. Go. Today's video is brought to you by PCBWay. Do you have an idea that you want to bring to fruition? A uh, board that you're trying to build or maybe some machinery, an experiment that you're working on? Look no further than PCBWay.com where they are the number one choice in PCB assembly as well as offering many other options for your ideas. Anything from CNC machining to 3D printing, they can easily take care of. Right now, they are doing a ninth anniversary promotion where the more you buy, the better sales you get and the better uh, deals that you get. So the more, so head on over there to get your, hopefully your free, uh, your free coupon and get a great deal on a great product at the same time. Right now, first time customers, it is only $5 for a board with shipping and handling. So thank you again to PCBWay.com and hopefully you guys can check it out. Now we'll get back to the content. Wait, am I going the right way? Or am I dumb? I am dumb. No, I don't, I don't need anybody to tell me that. I, I know that. Just don't like to tell people that, so keep it on the down low. Make sure it's straight. Yeah. And nice and tight. Tight enough? Okay. Ooh, yep. All right. So I like to weaken it with a little bit of alcohol. Just nice and easy stroke up. So that's pretty clean. And once again, I forgot that I don't have a paper towel, but do I have a napkin nearby? Oh, I do. Extra napkin lying around. There we go. So that side's pretty clean. Next side. And you will pick up glass and adhesive and all that fun stuff, but you'll scrape it all off so it's not the end of the world. And the adhesive is just to get it loose. You can always reheat it again if you want. Do it that way. But at this point, I don't really need to. And all that extra glass you see in the bottom, I will take that out. Don't worry. 
Gotta be a little careful with these sensors. They have a little cover on them that can pop off, but you can always stick it right back into place so it's not the end of the world. And then you just gotta be a little careful because this is a this is a pretty sharp edge, so you could dig you could technically dig into the aluminum body. No, I mean it's not gonna hurt anything, but it'll leave unwanted blemishes in the metal. Which honestly don't really think it matters because it's in inside anyways, you can't see it. And yep, that little piece fell right off, so now I'll just have to restick that on. So let's just uh, finish this first. Nice and easy. I think maybe for these parts I might actually do the speed up thing or something. Maybe be funny to hear my voice in a high plus voice. Or maybe like Schmeagel. Speaking of which, apparently that Gollum game that came out it was apparently really, really bad. I mean, it didn't look promising when you saw the when I saw the gameplay trailer or the trailer for it, considering the fact that they don't even get like close to the original actors. And whoever did do uh, whoever did do Gollum was uh, I look if you're a voice actor, you're you know you got you got kudos for me, but like I just think they chose the wrong person for that particular um, voice for that particular voice. I mean, it's, it, it should be either the original guy, which is, what, Andy something? I can't remember his name. Well, I, th I know it's Andy something, but anyways, you get the original guy, or you get somebody, like, you know, is, like, is close to him, because the guy didn't even sound like Schmeagle. Hell, I think I could do a better Schmeagle. Should I do it? Probably not. Because I'll scare, all, scare all, my, all my tons of subscribers away. Ooh. Which, by the time watching this, we should be close to 250, so we're a quarter of the way there for me possibly making money off of this. So, thanks for all the support. I really do appreciate it. Even if some of the comments are kind of like, you know, like, what the hell, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it is what it is. I, I ignore the blasphemers and all the negativity, and I focus on the ones that are actually constructive. Alright, so that, those are pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just so there's not a lot of bumps on it. That way the a new adhesive when you put it down. Or if it comes with adhesive, which I think mine does. We'll find out in a second. Um, it just makes it much smoother of an investment. Okay, so. So on the bottom side, you have to be a little um, more attentive. Um, you do have a couple things out here. Like, for example, right here and here. These are antennas um, for Bluetooth, wireless, um, cellular if you have a cellular version which i don't think this is one no it's not a cellular version so if you cut this well it's just the rings at the end that hold it so it's not the end of the world if you cut off just that edge um but it'll just be a little more difficult to put it back into place once you get ready to put the put the glass down you'll have to uh do some finagling and i just and i only know that because i've done it plenty of times you know, trial by fire. Yep, the glass is still snapping. Ah, nice and easy. There we go. All right, so I just need to scrape a little bit more off of it. Not a lot. But like what I'm saying here, see, if you cut these, that's fine, because these are just pieces of plastic. But if you were to like cut the whole thing in half or like rip it up that way, then you're then you're uh, in trouble. Because that that's popping up a little bit, so you got to be real careful when you're coming up to it. All right. So let's see if I can knock off some of this glass real quick. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do it over my garbage. Ugh. And then while I'm over here, grab my new compressed air. Oh, I stepped on something. Not sure what it was. Kind of hurt. This is one of the most fun things that you can do with the crest air, though. Little tab on top here, like a grenade, just pop it off. <laughs> Granada! Okay. Just gonna blow it off real quick, off to the side here, so it doesn't end up in the microphone or anything. Ah, look at that, I'd eat off of it. Well, probably not, because I don't know how much glass is still on it, so a little sketchy there. All right.
Put you down to the side. All right, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trade places with the uh, piece, other screen that's been sitting on the hot plate. You can put, I'm just gonna put this on the hot plate for now because uh, it's not gonna hurt anything because this is all off anyways. So, and it doesn't get hot enough to cause damage to the battery. At least not in the amount of time it's gonna take me to fix to do this, so. All right, so all we need to do is get this piece right here. That's it. So, uh, easy way I like to do it, I like to take either a scraper or an X-Acto knife, something precise with a little bit of an edge to it. Um, this little bracket here has got a little bit of like adhesive underneath it. It's kind of like a like a hot glue. When it's warm, easy butter cut through. Don't go all the way through because this flex connects to the bottom side of this. You got to be real careful. This one, the flex is on top, so you can just go right underneath and then pull over, nice and easy. Boom, done. Woo! And don't drop the exacto knife on yourself because it, it's quite sharp, so it'll probably hurt a lot. And then what I like to do for this is I'll just come from the outside, go all the way up. Right by this is a little tricky. There you go, up, 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 and boom. And then the home button is normally still stuck on the glass. And in this case, that piece of glass is just about falling off. So I'm just gonna take off the whole damn thing Got all the pieces off the glass. Useless. Done. Garbo. All right. Which again, I don't have real garbage, but whatever. There's a little bit left on here, so what I'm gonna do is just very carefully go along the outside. Or you know what? I don't think I need to do that. What if I just push? There we go. All right. Never mind. New tech. Uh, sorry. If it's warm, push from the outside. Perfect. Out. But you will notice, if you look at this, there is a ring around the uh, the uh, hole. That ring is a spacer, and depending on the screen you have, you might need that. So, where did I put the screen? Oh, right behind me. same size yeah okay funny fact ipad 7 8 and 9 all use the same screen i'm not i'm not even kidding they're the same connector they're the same everything so yeah so if you ever think you're out of them use a 7 8 or a 9 all right uh, back to what we're talking about so this one uh, it has a spacer this has a spacer with it so i don't have to worry about it which is super nice that these screens come with everything pre uh with everything pre come on uh this isn't a sponsor by them but like just a quick shout out to fixies that's where i get a good chunk of my um repair parts a lot of stuff comes pre pre fit with everything which is super convenient so shout out to them um, i'll throw their link down down below if anybody wants to just look at them you know take a quick peek but anyway So, everything's already set up on this guy. All I gotta do is put the home button in place. Um, so, what you have to do a lot for that, a lot of that, sometimes, a lot of times for that is, I'm gonna move you off to the side real quick. The brackets on these, if you notice, they're got some, like, they're sticky. They're really, really sticky. That's a little of the extra adhesive still left over. So we do need to take that off. Otherwise, it the glue that I use doesn't stick to... It won't stick to the glass and then to the adhesive. Because then it'll just kind of eat away at it and then it'll fall off. So um, I take an X-Acto or a scraper. However you want to do it. But you just want to get rid of a good chunk of it. Which this probably looks super exciting. This part I might just blow through. I don't know yet. Oh, come on. This is a new blade. You should be able to eat right through this stuff. I got some of it. All right, there you go. That's a good chunk of it gone. Got to be careful on the other side because there's more around it that I could easily cut. So I got to be a little, little careful. Luckily, I've been doing this for quite some time. Oh, shit! <laughs> huh. I've had 
Type 9s have a different adhesive. This is definitely uh, way more resilient than the other generations. Hmm. It's like Apple doesn't want anybody working on their stuff. Weird. All right, there we go. All righty then. Okay. So here's our new screen. Okay. So I line up the button first with the spacer. And then this is something I'm not, it's gonna be really hard to try and show. I'll try to, to the best of my ability. I just don't know how well it's gonna zoom in, so I gotta really hold it stationary. Okay, all right. So if you look underneath there, at the top, right there, there's a little nub on the bracket itself, and then there's a second nub directly below it. That's the home button one. What you wanna do is line it up so they're directly on top of each other, and if you hold it in place and you push, you should feel a click. You're not gonna hear anything because it's the newer ones, so they're a lot quieter. If you feel that click, that means you're in a good position. So, what I do then is I hold it in place that position. I get a little bit of my super glue. And I put it on the edge of like a, edge of like a, not a Q-tip, like a tweezer or something. All I'm gonna do is lift it up briefly, slather that on, slather that on. And then before it sets, just double check real fast if it's still in place, and it is, okay. And then there we go. Um, this is pretty fast acting stuff, so I shouldn't have to worry about holding it in place. This also isn't the normal adhesive that I have, but it's what I found. It's worked for other stuff fairly well, so we'll see how well it works on this guy. If not, it's just my family, so it's, you know, they'll just they'll just let me know right away. It's not the end of the world. All right, then we are going to line this all the way along the edge. Boom. All right, so it says peel off. Yeah, yeah. That's probably from the front again. Yep, yeah, there it is. They do a good job of keeping those ends from, from being protected. Put it on a little foam piece. Definitely make it so you don't want to. I just need it out of the way. Ah, there we go. Okay, cool. All right. So that's good. That's good. Now, here is the body of it. Nice, clean, prepped, ready to go. And now we're going to start reassembling it. And we're not going to do the full reassemble. I'm going to test, and then I'll do the full reassemble. But so that's garbage. I'm gonna blast everywhere, but luckily I got a little vacuum that I can take care of it all with. All right. So I'm gonna put the flex for the button first. It's a bit touchy, and also doesn't help that the aluminum body's been sitting on the hot plate the whole time. So it's a, it's a little warm. Click that into place, that down there. And then remember that rubber piece that we had earlier? It's gonna go down like this. It's kinda like a jigsaw, it only fits one way, so perfect right in there. And we're going to attach. Eh. Said we're going to attach. Don't you lie to me in front of these people. They pay no money to watch to watch me do this. There we go. Okay. So now that is attached. Put you back here. <coughs> Whoa. Hmm. You were fine. Great, so I gotta find something heavier now? Ugh. What about you? 
Okay, fine, I'll do both of you. There, quit whining. All right. Now we grab up my LCD. Try to keep your fingers off the LCD because fingerprints are a bit of a pain to clean off. But you know, if you're doing it, if you're not doing it the way I am, you probably have gloves on, which is a good thing. Okay, so we're gonna reconnect the LCD. Come on. Ooh, you're gonna be a pain. Oops, I think you saw my baldness. Oh no. Oh my god. Well, you can definitely tell this is not one of those scripted things, because that would have went in like butter. All right. So now we're going to pull this out backwards and then straight out. Give it a little push down. And then wherever the heck we put that screw, which should be off on itself, probably labeled battery or something like that. Finger tight. All right. So then, at least for testing, what I'm just going to do is put it down like this this guy down it might still be a little too warm to test we'll find out hold the power button hey all right so we got a screen good LCD is working I don't remember if she I don't remember if she gave me the passcode though but at least I can use the touchpad to, to see if that's working <laughs> yeah she didn't give me the passcode but it's a good indicator that it's working all right cool Turn that off. All right, so you know it's working, at least as much as I can test it. Um, I'll fully test it once I get the password from her. Um, I think it's like 10 o'clock, so I think she's probably asleep. Well, maybe, I don't know. Her kids are rambunctious, to say the least. All right, so I'll open you back up. Put my weight behind it. Okay, I guess that works. Okay. So now there is there is obviously electricity running through it, so just got to be a little bit careful for that. Ugh, sorry. No, not that way. Wait, yeah, it should be that way. There we go. So obviously keep anything metal away from any of these components. That way they don't get hit by anything. And at this point, you know, I might differ from other people. Some people may have already removed the covers for the adhesive and stuff like that. You know, it, to each his own in that in that respect. Um, I like to do it at the end when I have the LCD screwed down, it cleaned up to the best of I can, and then what I do is I rip off everything really fast so it minimizes the chance of any sort of dust getting inside of it. The key word is I try. I don't have a clean room. Not a lot of people have a clean room. I know there's like portable clean rooms you can buy online or like off of like certain websites. I've seen them off of like AliExpress and Mobile Centrics and hell, even the that Northridge uh, Northridge Fix where I got my uh, miniature soldering iron from. Um, I think they have something, but like it's like over two hundred dollars for that. So maybe someday, but the application will only be really for iPads. I don't really. I don't know if it'd really be worth it for that much of an investment. You know, it's just, just one of the things like, eh, is it really needed? Eh. Would I want it? Oh, yes, I would want to have it. Do I need it? No. Absolutely not. Alright. That's good, that's good. Okay. And then, let's see, is there any other piece? Oh, yeah, you fell off again, I think. Okay, so you... Back up on there. Don't know what sensors they are, but they are a sensor, so. I'm, I'm imagining there's some sort of light sensor. Alright, so now where is my microfiber cloth? Let me make sure you clean it out, shake it up a little bit, or grab a new one. Here, call. And then all I'm going to do is just go around and wipe up everything I can. A little isopropylene to get the initial stuff off. It'll leave a little bit of a residue, but I can always clean that off later.
because it dries so fast, you can just take the dry end of the, of the um, microfiber and clean it off then, so. See? But there are marks on the screen still, which is unfortunate. It always happens. And it may look like I'm putting pressure on it. I'm really not putting a lot. Like, you can see with the movement of the light right there, I'm not putting, like, barely... I'm putting, like, no pressure on it right now. These are just super, super sensitive, super, flex super flexible. All right, so... Yeah, these are just marks from the glass, it looks like. So, not much I can do with that, so... Give it a little spritz. All right. So now here comes the fun part. So I need to take off all the Tessa covering tape, which they are nice enough to leave a little area where you can grab it right from. Uh, this one all on the back, a little more difficult. You have to poke it, you have to pull it up and then grab. Because if you try to pull it through the front, you'll rip through all three of the flexes for the digitizer and for the home button. So you wanna get it started, but then pull it through the back. There we go. Okay. And then all that's left is there is a internal screen. Oops, hold on. See a bit of hair, might be my beard. You have an internal cover for the screen, which this one can actually be a little pain. This one might be a little too tight sometimes. Oh God, no. Right. Uh, that is the one qualm about these ones is that the, um, uh, I gotta clean that off again. The inside screen protector is super tight on there, which is great. It's not going to move around, but it does ne it never wants to come off. And it's supposed to come off super easy. So I have to pick at it with a... There we go. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to pick at it with... There we go. Ah. Pull that off. One more quick sprint. And then you're gonna put it down, which I go from the right side first, because those flexes have to be able to get into the right position. They have to fall into like a nice little hole that's sitting there. Give it a little massage. Run along the outside, see if there's nothing like protruding upwards. Looks pretty good to me. Or, sorry, protruding outwards. And then, I'm just gonna heat it for a few minutes. And then I'll show you the final thing you gotta do. Be right back. Back again, only two cuts this time. I'm making a, I'm making a big difference. All right, so the last thing we got to do is you need to put some sort of weight or some sort of pressure on it to keep it together. Um, I don't have a proper vice set up, unfortunately. Um, just um, the one that I've been looking at for a long time just never seems to be in stock. So I think I have to contact the company directly to do it. But So in the meantime, I'm using these ones. So they're all in. The thing about them is that I don't like them because they're all individual. So unless you know the pressures perfectly, might not put them all down the right way like you could have too much pressure in one area not enough in the other area that kind of that kind of thing so that's why i generally don't like using them otherwise if you had like a decent sized weight like i don't know uh probably like 15 pounds and a roughly same uh size as this you could flip this over and put it through the back and then just apply from the back for uh, apply it on the back because then if you put it on the aluminum frame obviously you're not gonna run the chance of cracking the screen or anything put it on like a um 
you know, like a rubber mat, like what I have, or on a microfiber, so it's nice and soft, not gonna cause any extra damages. But this is what I'm using right now, because this is all I have, and this is honestly more time, more space saving. I don't like using them though, but I'm just kind of forced to out of necessity. All right, so the one right here. But you realize this one's in a weird spot, so I'm gonna redo that one. Now let's put this one lightly over the home button area, just right in front of it, because there's a little bit of adhesive there. Okay. Just give them little tugs. And then what you do is you let that sit for, you know, an hour or two to be on the safe side, probably more like 30 minutes, but I leave it for an hour or two, and you will be all set, ready to go. So that is the iPad 9 screen replacement. So thank you for watching. And again, I want to put a thank you to PCBWA for sponsoring this video. And if you guys have any questions, you know, throw them down below. You know where to put them. Have a good one. Bye.